All right, let's get on to 2.4. So we talked about postulates and diagrams last time. Now we're on to algebraic proofs, okay? So we're finally getting into the proofs of the section, all right? So first thing is I'm going to need you to memorize these right here. We'll talk about them for a second, but I want you to memorize them, okay? And it's not so important that it says of equality, okay? These are all of equality, but that's going to be very obvious, right? Because this right here is an equal sign, and if it has an equal sign, it's going to be a property of equality. But these are just some properties that the equal sign gives us, okay? And so different different symbols have different different meanings. Equals is very nice, okay? And there's, you can have all kinds of these properties. And so I'm going to talk about them, but you have to make sure you understand, okay? So the addition property of equality. All that means is that if I have two numbers, if a equals b, then I can add c to both sides, okay? That's kind of like when I do this, x minus two equals five. What I do to both sides is I add two, right? And I can do that because of the addition property of equality. I'm allowed to add the same thing to both sides. That's all this means. I can add the same exact thing to both sides. I can add C to both sides, okay? So if I'm adding to both sides, it's the addition property of equality. If I'm subtracting from each side, right, I can subtract the same thing from each side, that's the subtraction property of equality. If I want to multiply the same thing on both sides, that's the multiplication property of equality. It can't be zero. I can't just do, 5x equals 2, take the both sides times 0. That's not allowed, OK? Let's cross these out better. If I want to divide the same thing on both sides, that's the division property, OK? Again, c can't be 0 because you can't have 0 on the bottom. Can't divide by 0. And the last one is a substitution property. So these ones are all obvious, right? I can add, subtract, multiply, or divide the same thing on both sides. The property is very clear with what the pr process that you did, right? The last one is the substitution property. Okay, and what that means is if I had like 5x equals, you know, y, but I know that x is equal to 2, then I'm allowed to plug x in right there, okay? Um, what that means, it, the reason I can do that is by the substitution property. If, if these two are the same thing, then instead of using a, I can use b, or I can use b or a either way anywhere I see it. So here we have 5x equals y, but I know what x is. I can use 2 instead of x at any point, okay? That's just plugging something in that's substituting, okay? It's probably the most confusing one, but these properties, the first four should be obvious. The last one is just plugging something in. If you plug in something in, it's substitution, okay? They're all of equality. Again, there's an equal sign. Uh, next section will have of congruence, but that won't, that, won't, that won't be this section, okay? So let's go ahead and do some stuff. So again, these are the properties. I'm going to be talking about them a lot, but make sure you know where they're at because I'm going to use them down here without talking about it, okay? So let's look at our first proof, okay? Now this is called a two-column proof, and the reason it's called a two-column proof is that here we have the, the uh, equation, and then there's usually not this one right here. This isn't usually here, right? So it's equation and a reason. And the idea is here's the step that we did. Why'd you do it? Okay, and so that's kind of the process we're gonna take. This is kind of an intro to that, but it'll be okay. So here the question says, solve three x plus two equals 23 minus four x and justify each step. This equation should be very, very simple to solve, right? right? Like if I told you to do it on your own, you could do it in a second, right? These are the steps that you would actually take right here. They're laid out for you, right? First thing you would do, let's get the x's on one side, so we'll add four x to each side, right? Then you simplify that. Okay, then from here you subtract two on both sides. Simplify that, and then you divide. Okay, so there's a couple very obvious things. Like this first one, right? The equation, the reason that you are allowed to do that is because it is given to you. Okay, that's a given statement. Okay, you always start proofs with given because that's a, that's a thing that you're told to do, and so you should start with it. Okay. Now it says to add 4x to each side. Now you usually wouldn't show this step, okay? This step from here to here, the reason you're allowed to do it is because of the addition property of equality, okay? Add property of equality. Um, we're adding the same thing to both sides, and that's fine. We are allowed to do that because of the addition property of equality. That's why we're allowed to, okay? Combine like terms, that's just simplification. You can write that. I'll probably have you actually write combined like terms. I like that more. But the, your, the reason that you ought to do that is you're just simplifying. You're cleaning stuff up, right? You're actually adding 3x and 4x, OK? Now, from here, we subtracted the same thing on both sides. So we're allowed to do that because of the subtraction property 
of equality. Again, just to harken back, we're using all of these, right? Okay. That's a subtraction property. Combine like terms, again, we'll simplify here. And now we're going to divide the same thing on both sides, so that's the division property of equality. Okay, and so that, that's pretty easy, right? I feel like you could have done that on your own. You could have started with the equation. You could do all of this stuff without my hand. You could do all this stuff over here on your own, no problem. I'm not worried if you can solve equations or not, right? And so now all we're doing, the whole purpose of this is that I'm saying, hey, step two, why'd you do that? And you have a reason, okay? You have a law that says, I'm allowed to do that step because of this, okay? Not just because it felt right or you're balancing equations or you learned it last year. We have an actual rule, a property that tells us, here's why we're allowed to do this. That's the whole purpose, okay? The why to what you do, okay? So let's learn some more properties. Here we have the distributive property, okay? You know it, right? And so if we have A times B plus C, you distribute in the A, and you get AB plus AC, and the same thing works for subtraction, right? AB minus AC, okay? That's called the distributive property. You're aware of that already, okay? Now, there's a few more properties that you're not so aware of, and these are gonna be new. These are the ones that I'm a little bit more worried about you memorizing, because the first four, add, subtract, multiply, divide, it should be obvious. Substitution, shouldn't be too hard. Um, distributed property, you already know. So those properties are fine. These ones are brand new, okay? So the first one is the reflexive property. So I want you to think of your reflection, AKA a mirror, right? You look into a mirror, who do you see? You see yourself, you see the same thing, right? And so the fact that, you know, two is equal to two, that's the reflexive property. It's the same thing, right? The length of the segment, AB, well, if the segment's five meters long, then the segment's five meters long, right? That's just the reflexive property that's saying you are yourself. That's all it is, okay? It's very useful uh, in segments. It's not so useful in real numbers, okay? On to the symmetric property. So I want you to think of symmetry. Okay, symmetry means it's the same on both sides. What I always think of with symmetry is I think of like the heart that you made when you were a kid, right? You folded a paper in half and you drew out your half a heart on one side, and then you cut out that half a heart and you ended up with a full heart, right? Because it's the same thing on both sides. Okay, so that's what the symmetry means. So all that means is for equal equality here, if I have A equals B, then I can flip it, right? If A equals B, then B equals A. It's the same thing either way. Okay, that's a symmetric property. Um, again, these are all of equality, so this only has to do with equal signs. We know nothing else about anything else, okay? Just equal signs, okay? So what this means, and this is something we've used a lot, right, is if we had if uh, two is equal to x, right, we get that at the end, and I say, oh, you can just flip that, then x equals two, that's a symmetric property. That allows us to do that, right? Because we just flip the order, but that's fine, because the equal, equal sign is symmetric, and we can do that, okay? And the last one is the transitive property. It's kind of like the law of syllogism that we talked about, right? So if we have A equal to B and B equal to C, then A is equal to C. Shouldn't be too hard, right? So the basic idea is if we had X is equal to Y and Y is 2, then what you can do is you can actually go, hey, well, X is Y and Y is 2. That means that X is equal to 2, right? Just like we did with the law of syllogism. Same thing, okay? But here it's for equality. It has this transitive property. Okay, when you get to college, you'll learn that these three things together build a really nice uh, nice situation. But for now, those are just three independent properties. Make sure you understand them. If you have questions, ask me. Okay, make sure you understand those three properties because we're going to use them all the time. Okay, if you're having a little bit of trouble understanding the transitive property versus the substitution property, that's actually fine. They're pretty common. But for the transitive property to work, it has to be in this order. Okay, now if you had C and B mixed around but it was equal sign, then you could flip them and it would still work. But for the most part, only use transitive if it's in that order, okay? So we're gonna use this, these properties, and we're gonna try to justify these things, okay? So these are just from the top three. So if the measure of angle six is the same as the measure of angle seven, then the measure of angle seven is equal to the measure of angle six, okay? All we did there, we flipped it, right? So that would be the symmetric property. We're allowed to flip things because of the symmetric property, okay? Of equality, of course, I'm just gonna skip that though. Okay, go ahead and pause me and do B and C. Okay, We're, it's either going to be reflexive or transitive. Go ahead and try it. Okay. Okay, so for B, 34 is equal, to, is equal to 34. It's equal to itself, right? If you see that, that's always the reflexive property. It's like a mirror. Okay, 34 is equal to itself, reflexive property. And the last one, if 1 is 2 and 2 is 5, then 1 is 5. Okay, that's that. 
if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. That's set up, right? And so that is the transitive property. Okay. All right. So hopefully you kind of have a lockdown on those properties. Okay. This shouldn't be too terribly difficult. So now we're going to get on to the actual meat of the lesson here. So we have those properties. I think there's what? Uh, nine of them, if I recall. Okay. But we're going to use these to actually do proofs. Okay, so I'm going to do two proofs in these notes here. I think just two. Yeah, just two proofs. Um, but these ones should be pretty straightforward. Okay, and so I'm, I'm going to kind of mimic the entire way to do it for the first one. And then I'll leave some stuff off for the second one so that we can do it in class. Okay, but this first one should allow you to do your homework. And it should allow you to understand what's going on. It shouldn't be too bad at all. Okay, so again, the question's not hard. You can solve this. I'm not worried about that. The idea is how do we justify using math what we did and have really sound logic, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna have you do when you see these questions is I'm gonna have you take that equation and solve it on a separate piece of paper, okay? I need to find a separate piece of paper, and once I do, I'll be good to go, okay? I'm gonna, just gonna do it right here on the back of this. So, I didn't plan ahead. So, on a separate sheet of paper, you're gonna solve this. This is your scratch work, okay? You can even write scratch work on top of your paper. So this is not something we're saving. No one's ever gonna see this. It's a big old secret, okay? So we have 5x minus 10 equals negative 40. Go ahead and add 10 to both sides. We get 5x equals negative 30. Divide by 5, and we get negative 6, okay? So there's our answer. We could check it if we're a little scared, right? 5 times negative 6 is negative 30 minus 10 is negative 40. We're good to go, okay? And so what we want to do is for our statements, we want to put in these steps without any of this inside filler stuff, right? So I don't, want, I don't want anybody to know what I did here, okay? That's a secret. And so I'm going to put the original equation in. And then after I did my first step, the next thing that I have. And then after my step, like I wouldn't want to show the divide by five, right? Then the last step, okay? So now our scratch work's gone, no one knows. It's completely polished, okay? And so all we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse engineer what we did. That's it, okay? So this is a very easy one, obviously. But what we have here is we have the reason. So why do we have this first equation, okay? The first thing always, always, always in a proof is the given. You gotta start somewhere. This was given to us in the problem, and so we start with it. That's all it is, okay? So the first one's always given, okay? And so now here's where it gets a little bit confusing, right? So you ask yourself, from here to here, what did we do? Okay? And so it'd be, it'd be tempting to write, like, oh, we added 10 to both sides. Well, that's not the reason that we did that, though, right? That was the explanation. So we added 10 to both sides, but why were we allowed to go from here to here? What changed? What were we, why were we allowed to do that? Okay? And so we added 10 to go from here to here. And the reason we're allowed to add 10 to both sides was one of those first properties. And if you're adding the same thing to both sides, it is the addition property of equality. I'm gonna write Poe for property of equality, okay, addition Poe. So that's the reason we went from here to here is we were allowed to add the same thing to both sides. That's what we did, okay, does that make sense? And so as you're reading from here to here, it's the reason that we go from the first step to the next step. So from this step to this step, what did we do? Well, we divided by five on both sides. What allows us to divide on five by five on both sides is the division property of equality. Okay, that's what allows us to do it. All right, I think we might actually have time to do the next one, okay? Let's go ahead and do it. So notice this has a t-chart here. That's for the two column proof. This next one doesn't actually have that, so we're gonna make it ourselves, okay? So go ahead and write your statements. Was very not up and down and your reasons okay again step one scratch paper no one has to know right no one has to know so we have 6x plus 17 equals a negative 7 let's go ahead and solve this right first thing we're gonna do is subtract 17 I'm gonna show it all on here we're not gonna show it in the proof okay so we have 6x equals what is that negative oof 24 seems right to me tell me if I'm wrong later Next step, divide by six. Again, this is a secret. No one has to know this. So we end up with a final answer of x equals a negative four, okay? So take this 
and we're going to copy that down into our statements over here but we're not going to include that little stuff that we did in between right so our first one is the whatever it ha had to start with and then the next one is 6x equals negative 24 and then the last one is our answer again and these can be a lot more steps right that's that's the thing these get a lot more complicated but these ones are pretty easy okay again you always start with the given always 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 okay now from here to here what did we do well, we subtracted 17 on both sides. What allows you to subtract on both sides? That is the subtraction property. Property of equality. Okay? And then from here to here, what do we do? Well, we divide it by 6. What allows you to divide by 6 on both sides? That is the division property. Okay? And that's it. So these shouldn't be that bad. The left side should be very easy to generate, right? Where you can solve equations. The right side is just, what did you do to get from here to here, okay? So no summary this week. I just want you to go practice, okay? Go do these problems. Go make sure you can do the homework, okay? This stuff is usually the hardest section for kids, and it's not too bad, okay? You'll do just great. So uh, let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, good luck.